Hello, 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 and welcome back to the channel. The name is Chev, also known as the Curious Chicken. And I'm so glad you're back because today I want to share with you my personal investment strategies. Now, this is my personal investment strategy. So, like what I always, I always mention in my videos, I am stupid when it comes to crypto and I know nothing about technical analysis. Everything that I'm going to say right now is based on my personal belief and experience. So take everything with a big bucket of salt, okay? If you're cool with that, let's begin. By the end of this video, I will try my best to convince you on why it is much more beneficial to buy gold foil commons than gold foil legendaries in the short term as well as in the long term. All right, okay, cool. First off, let's get an example. Um, what is the cheapest gold foil right now in the market? I'm assuming it's gold foil hard claw because it's basically been given away for free given you're lucky enough um, But let's see um, Okay, gold foil legendary Yep, hard claw is the cheapest. It is $68 Okay, so let's go with that. I know there are other much uh, more expensive cards but let's just say that out of all the lucky people that were able to get gold foils, you are the most unlucky one because you got the cheapest one, which is, would still make you lucky enough, but you know. Uh, let's see. So let's say you have $68 and you want to keep it because it is a gold foil legendary. It gives you 12,500 power. You only need to add a few more cards to be eligible for the silver three league. That means no credits anymore. Everything is fine in there. But let's, let me share with you right now how this situation can be so much better with the same amount, actually even less. Not just in the long term, not just in the short term I mean, but in the long term as well. Let's say you believe me and you sell the $68 card. Of course, we have to give either, either Jarvi or Agro the 5%. Because if you sell it, there's a 5% market fee. So that is just going to be $64.06, right? Now, let's take a look at how many gold foil commons we can buy with that amount. The cheapest gold foil common is the Pelicor Deceiver for about 50 cents, 52 cents. I'm particularly talking about this first six ones because these are the free cards that we get from the rewards. So we're going to use that as an example. Um, let's say of $64.06, right? That's our budget. So you divide it by 52 cents because that's how much each Pelicor Deceiver is. Uh, the result would be how many Pelicor Deceiver, how many Gold Foil Common Rewards we can get for this amount. We will be able to get 124 copies of level three Gold Foil Pelicor Deceiver, okay? Now, the question is, how much power are we gonna get with this number of Pelicor Deceivers, which we bought with almost the same amount, actually less amount, than the original amount and then the original value of that gold foil hard claw. Well, each common is 125 power. I mean, each gold foil common has 125 power. The result is 15,500. So with just this conversion, the immediate result is that from bronze one, you can get to bronze three. I mean, silver three right away. You get 15,500 power. And if you're looking in the future, which, what, what, what I'm talking about is the modern league, you will be more eligible. You will be much, much more eligible for higher leagues because in the modern league, everything is going to be halved. So you only need 7,500 for silver three and around um, 20,000. 20, yeah, 20,000 for silver two and 35,000 for silver one so um in the short term this conversion gives you access to a higher league right away that's not it that's not i mean that's not just with this more collection power means more sps airdrops and we still have four months before the end of the sps airdrop duration that means more SPS for you just by holding gold foil commons instead of that single gold foil legendary. Uh, what else? Well, let me show you another thing. If you go to the rental market right now, 
Uh, these gold foil commons, I believe, goes for uh, let's see, gold foil commons. Just go to my gold foil common. I have, I have tons of them. So for forty cents, forty-one cents. Let's see. Calculator. So one hundred twenty-four cards multiplied by point forty-one cents. Oh, not multiply, divided. Oh, no, multiply. And math is really eluding me today. So, no, not 51. 41. <laughs> For 41 cents, $124 multiplied by 41 cents, you get 50 DEC, almost 51 DEC every day by renting all those cards. So, in case you don't want to play grinding, uh, the, the grind. Uh, of the silver league and you don't have the competitive cards to actually win those DEC or the DEC earning per game is not enough for you you can just rent them all out every day and it will give you 51 DEC that's hard cold DEC okay uh, let's compare it to how much a legendary is so what is the cheapest legendary uh, for uh, for rent so let's go for Lear the Dark. And the cheapest one is just 30 DEC per day. Let's go to the second one just in case you know, that's a bad number. Carnage Titan is going for 30 to 50 as well. So around lower or the same number, maybe even a little bit higher, you can get almost the same amount of DEC in certain situations. And in some situations, you get more DEC by renting this gold foil comments than renting a single gold foil legendary so those are the benefits a short term of this strategy that i am doing right now and i want to be i want to share with you as well you know if ever you're lucky enough to be able to get the gold foil legendary now what are the long-term benefits of this strategy well my friend this one is mostly based on my personal experience and belief okay so you have to take this with an ocean load of salt but i personally believe that it is much easier for a common card to x5 than a gold foil legendary okay let me show you that gold foil heart claw that we saw earlier was 68 dollars right 68 dollars if you multiply it by x5 that would be 340 dollars um, I personally think that maybe in the future, once that this gets printed out and the Bitcoin aligns itself to how much this card's value are, uh, I think the more realistic number would be an X3, which is already awesome enough on its own, right? So X3, you get around $204 for this card after maybe a few months, six months or so. I'm not sure. Again, this is not financial advice. I'm stupid. But this is just me throwing out numbers so let's say it gets x3 you win um your bet you you were holding 68 dollars worth of card after six months you sold it for plus 130 dollars awesome right but if you use that same amount that 65 dollars uh let's say 64 dollars and multiply it by x5 you get 320 dollars which would give you more than $250 earnings if you're holding gold foil commons. Now, you might not be convinced why I think gold foil commons are much easier to flip into X5 or X3, uh, I mean X5 than a gold foil, to X, uh, than a legendary to X5 on its own. Well, let me give you a point of view, my friend. If you go to the gold foil commons right now, they are... 50 cents and if you go back to around november even around december where everything is dropping these cards are still worth around four dollars five dollars right i remember buying these gold foils for around four four to five dollars uh when they weren't oversupplied yet because there's not much reward cards going around yet but that amount that x that four or five dollars is already x10 friend i'm not even talking about x10 i just wanted to x to x5 x5 would be just around two dollars two dollars fifty 
and once all of these cards are printed out maybe around december or maybe the first quarter of next year and everyone is just combining them because of the deflationary value of these cards that uh, they have a limited number that everyone the new players as well as the old players would have to uh fight for ascent eventually the demand will go high uh, go higher the supply would stay the same that means the the prices would just is, has nowhere to go but but up so x5 for this card i think is easy in the future um so that means that instead of just getting plus 130 i think you should be earning i mean instead of just going plus 150 dollars after six months let's say I think you should be going for plus two fifty dollars for this gold foil commons after the same amount of time waiting for your investment to flip for a higher value now there's this one other point that i want to uh i want to share with you about the value of these cards i believe that when it comes to uh, new sets where new summoners comes out the meta changes drastically and the value of these cards changes based on how the meta goes. Now the biggest example for this one is that Venerio Wavesmith. If you remember Venerio Wavesmith around November when Alric was still uh, a free summoner, its value is around 5 to $6. <laughs> I mean if you look at how much a regular uh, Wavesmith is right now, it's 9 cents. This was $6 around that time i don't even want to compute how much that is well let's just compute how much that is <laughs> divided by 0 0.9 that is 66 percent not 66 percent 66 times 6666 percent of how much it is right now i don't want to look at that value i just want to say maybe x10 or even x20 Right? Because one of these gold foil commons becomes a meta card because a new summoner enables it so much, right? I would, I mean, this is a possibility for the legendary as well, of course. Maybe a new summoner becomes, uh, makes a Harklaw a, beta, uh, a meta card and it becomes X5 easy instead of just the X3. But I would still bet on six cards that you have hundreds of copies of. Uh, to become meta cards and a common which is more accessible to everyone than a, a legendary card which is a single card that maybe maybe can be a strong meta card in the future that's why i think the potential is way way higher in the future for this gold foil commons than the gold foil legendaries again this is my personal belief you don't have to believe me and if you think my thought about this one is flawed i want to talk about it with you let me know in the comment section below so maybe you can share your best practices as well when it comes to your investment but that is my personal personal preference when it comes to investing in this gold foil cards now just to summarize summarize my thought um this is a tldr for you one i think gold foil commons are much better when it comes to uh, investments short term and long term than gold foil legendary one, they give you more power for the same amount of dollars. Two, of course, because of more power, they give you more SPS airdrop and we still have four months before that airdrop ends. Uh, third, there are instances where it is much better to rent out hundreds of gold foil commons than a single gold foil legendary. In the long term, I think it is much, much, uh, the potential for a common card to X5 is much higher than for a gold foil legendary to x5 of its amount in maybe six months or a year and it is much higher for multiple common cards to be a meta staple and have and be x10 or x20 than a single gold foil legendaries well, that is my thoughts for today i hope it has been helpful for you if you have thought about this strategy as well and you haven't shared it Please let me know so you know we can say to ourselves that we have the same mind we're b1 b2 basically from bananas and pajamas or if you haven't thought about it and you want to give it a try please do let me know as well so maybe we can get some testimonials in the comments so everyone can try it out as well and we can all look forward in the future where this game that we all love gave us more 
more money than our daily jobs can. <laughs> okay, that's what I have for today. Uh, I appreciate your time and thank you for always hanging out. Once again, this is Chev, also known as the Furious Chicken, and I will be back with another one real soon. Goodbye.